Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Michael Olmstead, and it's a pleasure to be with all of you today to share a little bit about Plug and Play and our amazing partnership with the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. For those of you who don't know, Plug and Play is the largest global innovation platform in the world. We run over 50 different startup accelerator programs across 33 cities. We work with more than 300 corporate partners to fuel their external innovation strategies, and we ourselves invest in over 200 startups every year. We've got an amazing history dating back to the 1990s when our founder, Saeed Amidi, was lucky enough to accelerate, invest in, and house companies like Google, Logitech, PayPal, and Danger. These humble beginnings have brought us here today. As a company, our goal is to help the world progress through innovation and connection. And for this to happen, we believe that innovation should be open to anyone and anywhere which is why we've created this amazing global platform, which we're so happy to share with the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. Our network is comprised of more than 400 corporate partners who are actively coming to us to meet startups that are aligned with business challenges they may have or that are aligned with specific technology focus areas that they're looking to learn about. We also work with a number of amazing startups, thousands every year that we vet and source to make our amazing investments. Some of these success stories include Dropbox, Lending Club, PayPal, SoundHound, to name a few. Out of the 1,500 portfolio companies we've invested in, about 1% have exceeded a billion dollars in valuation, and about 10% have exceeded 100 million in valuation. And we're so proud of each and every one of them. The way that we're able to attract and find the best startups in the world are through our themed innovation platforms which are industry-specific programs where we bring together corporations that represent the value chains in each of their respective industries who will collectively dictate the focus of the program from a technology perspective and help us select the best startups that will enter into a 12-week program. We currently have 18 different industry focus areas that we're looking at, and our newest, most recent, and one that we're so proud of is the End Plastic Waste Platform. This partnership with the Alliance to End Plastic Waste commenced on October 23rd, 2019, and the Plug and Play End Plastic Waste Innovation Platform is now a global network of startup accelerators that spans across Silicon Valley, Paris, and Singapore. Out of these three hubs throughout the next two years, we will run six accelerator programs, two per hub, across each of the three hubs that are currently in place. Each accelerator program has a corresponding panel of Alliance members and a coinciding selection day where 10 startups are chosen by the panel to join the program. And we're so excited to announce a few new locations today. Thank you all for listening, and I'd like to pass this on to my esteemed colleague and the leader of the Alliance and Plastic Waste Partnership, Mr. Matthew Claxton. Thanks for that great introduction, Mike. Um, my name is Matthew Claxton. I'm a Global Director of Sustainability, and I cannot be more thrilled and excited to welcome you all to our End Plastic Waste Global Showcase, featuring 15 amazing startups that have come out of our Silicon Valley and our Paris program, and the amazing work that been, they've been doing over the last seven months with either the Alliance that's themselves, the Alliance members, or a few different uh, partners that we work with at Plug and Play. So, you know, before I get into the details of, you know, today's event, I just want to back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about how we got here. So, Plug and Play Sustainability actually has three pillars under it. So, first off is our end plastic waste innovation platform. Uh, we've been working with startups across different parts of the plastics value chain, whether they're tackling, um, you know, areas of issues in collection, sorting, processing, um, or startups that are finding and use markets uh, for this type of plastic waste. We look at finance of incentivizing people to collect plastic waste or you know, take it. Um, we look at river pollution prevention, waste material change, and then design of plastic to make it easier to recycle. Our other two new pillars that will be launching in early 2021 are, is our water resilience program that focuses on all the different aspects of the water industry. So whether it's treatment, digitalization, conservation, recycling, or plant process optimization, um, or infrastructure. We then look at circularity. And in our circular economy program, we look at, you know, really enabling the circular economy, moving away from a linear economy, um, not, so much, not so focused on plastics, but other types of um, materials and industries that really need to move to a much more uh, sustainable solution. We're also looking a lot on carbon neutrality and working with partners all around the world on making them carbon neutral by working with startups in different parts of the world and in different industries. So... What we, how we got here was 
plug and play created call for applications um, late last year in October, where we announced to the world that we are accepting applications from startups that are tackling plastic waste and we invite everyone to apply. Um, from there, Plug and Play actually also did its own sourcing through our team of ventures, people all around the world to find these really exciting startups. So from that, we created an elite list of 50 companies, which were then narrowed down to a top 20 and ultimately a top 11 by the panel members you see on the side of your screen that were you know, reviewing these startups and then voted on which ones to be going on to the next stage and ultimately into the program. This is an example of our Paris program um, we have different panel members for our Silicon Valley program and different members from our Singapore program. So from this, we've actually already accelerated 32 startups around the world. The top 10 uh, from Silicon Valley have already graduated. They graduated back in May. And today actually marks the end of our Paris program. Uh, you know, we're very sad at the end of it, but you know, it's not really the end. It's really just the beginning of working with these startups to drive more collaboration together, to drive much more meaningful impact and investments through um, so that these startups can work on you know, getting their solutions out there to different parts of the world that really need it. And we're right now only a month into our Singapore program and we cannot be more thrilled to see the types of collaboration and partnerships that have already been being formed. But one thing I do wanna stress is these are the 15 that will be talking today. So we'll be hearing from all of them in our next Global Showcase event that we'll be having early 2021. You'll be hearing from the rest of the startups on their partnerships and engagements that have been being formed as a result of this program. So the thing I really wanna stress everyone is, you know, there's been a lot of studies out there, a lot of things have been kind of taking a step back or put on the back burner because of COVID, but now is really the time for action. Now is really the time to start engaging with these startups, to start engaging with different uh, members of the Alliance, the Alliance itself, different plug and play members or plug and play itself. If you have any questions on how you can engage with us, please feel free to reach out to me at any time we're always happy to chat and figure out how you can work with us. And that's really what we want to do is we want to drive more engagement together. We want to make sure the right people are working together um, and create new and interesting ways of collaboration, ultimately with the goal of driving long lasting impact and making our world far more sustainable. And that's the purpose of today's event. We want you to hear from these startups, hear from these corporations and from the Alliance themselves on how they've been working with startups over the last seven months, how they've been collaborating with one another and really driving meaningful impact and creating new projects all around the world. So first off, I'd love for us to get started um, with a fireside chat, but before that, quick housekeeping item. You'll be hearing from every single member of Plug and Play Sustainability team on how, um, you know, on as you know, they introduce the next panel or fireside chat or startup. Um, and we, you know, they've been working diligently around you know, around the clock um, for this program to make sure it's as meaningful and as impactful as it possibly can. Um, and we wanted you to get to know them uh, because they may not have been in some of the other events that we've had throughout the year. Um, lastly, as you, at the end of every presentation, you will see a poll pop up. Um, please click it if you'd like to meet or have an introduction with those startups and Plug and Play will facilitate the introduction after that. So with that, let's go ahead and kick it off with our first fireside chat between Plug and Play CEO, Saeed Amidi, um, and Jacob Dior, the President and CEO of the Alliance and Plastic Waste, as they talk about their relationship together um, and their future collaboration and partnership and how it's growing around the world. Take it away, guys. Jacob, uh, it is great to see you again. And I hope one of these times I can come to Singapore or you can come here to California that we truly see each other you know across the table but it's good to see you uh, the best we can do on this uh, zoom right now but if I may start it's been a great journey almost uh, coming up to a year that we have known each other and we have worked together. And I am so excited that we could uh, launch uh, Silicon Valley, uh, somewhat uh, real. We had a lot of people there and it was a great uh, launch. And then Paris and then Singapore. And, you know, when you, when we as plug and play start a new initiative, 
we really hope to have our counterpart, uh, your team, you know, as well as your member companies participate. And it has been incredible as far as I am concerned, the true engagement, the true passion that some of the individuals in this large company have for this cause. You know, because we start different activities, now we have a you know, agricultural and food activity. But this one, it seems like it comes from both the mind and from the heart. And it's super, super exciting to work with this conglomerate companies on this project. How was it on your side? How did you feel during the last 10 months in spite of this uh, COVID-19? No, so you, first of all, from our side, it, I think it has been a fantastic relationship that we have developed between Plug and Play and the Alliance to End Plastic Waste and bringing to that partnership incubators and, and innovators. And I think working with you has far shown that there is a important innovation gap that we need to fill and that gap needs to fill, be filled from new ideas, from, from entrepreneurs who have a different perspective, but also who is very much driven around passion. I think we have been extremely encouraged by the very large number of pitches and ideas that have come forward, with more than 1,000 startups having presented ideas to the program through the three hops over a period of just six to, to eight months. And I think the number in, in itself indicates not only the interest and the opportunities that are out there, but also the fact that there is a need for addressing the issue of plastic waste in the environment and that everyone wants to be part of that solution going forward. You know, it is uh, actually great. As I mentioned uh, to you earlier, I have been working in the plastic packaging business for go coming up to almost 40 years. And it's uh, truly a pleasure that now I can sort of go full circle and say I will do my best to help to uh, reduce plastic waste and hopefully one day eliminate it. And I must... Uh, also emphasize what I have learned to do here in Silicon Valley and in uh, Northern California is to find good entrepreneur, put light on them and rally behind them, hopefully with some money, some mentoring and help them realize their dream. And we feel we can do exactly the same process that we have done for technology and software to do it with plastic waste. What is your thoughts? I mean, it's still early in our journey, but I feel very confident we could take all our learning and apply it to great teams and great results. And that's exactly what, what we are hoping to do and what we are looking at. And I think for us, this is just the beginning of the journey in, in identifying and working with our entrepreneurs and in, in developing new solutions for ending plastic waste in the environment. We have run three programs. We are going to run another three in Silicon Valley, in Europe, and in, in Southeast Asia with Singapore as the hub. And we're excited about also expanding the program to China, to Latin America, through a Sao Paulo hub, and to Africa as well, through a Johannesburg hub. And again, what we have seen now in, in very short time is not only have many entrepreneurs and new ideas come to the forefront, but we see that their interest in investing. Right? So not only will the alliance go out and potentially invest in some of those new startups that have been incubated, but we also see that our member companies are interested in, in exploring and in learning and investing. 
But even beyond that, the larger investment community through your network within plug and play, but we also see in terms of venture capital and private equity, they're looking to the program that we have developed together in terms of, of new ideas. The world is lacking ideas when we talk plastic waste management, when we talk education and engagement, when we talk cleanup, and when we talk, I would say, even recycling, whether it's mechanical or advanced recycling. And therefore, the investments that we are making now are just early investments in large-scale solutions for the future. I think what it also shows for us is that this is not a one-person solution to a large-scale problem. We all need to be part of the solutions going forward. And I think at least in the space of waste management, I think the entrepreneurs and sort of the innovators have been maybe a community that has not been integrated sufficiently in developing solutions for the future. We are hoping very much through this joint program between Plug and Play and the Alliance that we can bring them to the forefront and we can bring this topic to the forefront, recognizing that if we are talking waste management, 3 billion people on this planet, they still do not have access to proper waste collection. And we want to find solutions also for them, um, in particular in countries where we see a- Very good. You know, there is, uh, till today, whenever I have made investments, and uh, you know, I always say it's great to do your due diligence, find great technology and the team and the market, but also it's good to be lucky. So I have had my share of luck with investing in different uh, startups, uh, but this one feels different. Uh, this one, I have mentioned it to my friends and colleagues, even my daughter Sophie, which is 20 years old, says to me, Saeed, or dad, she actually calls me Saeed, I'm <laughs> proud of you. And I hope uh, that I can uh, remain on her top of her list and uh, make a real impact. Plug and Play is committed to investing in minimum 20 startups at the early stage and help them grow so we can bring in larger investors and scale the business globally. Fantastic. And this is the type of commitments that we are looking at. And I can say we are excited about Plug and Play, not only leading this program together with us, but also want to invest in the ideas and in the startups that are coming forward. And I know that that will be multiplied by many, including by us, the Alliance, our member companies, and the broader investment community out there. And I'm sure that there will not only be one of the startups, but hopefully many that are worth multi-million dollar investments going forward, because that is unfortunately also what is required. We need relatively large resources to addressing a, a, a large problem. But there's no doubt that with the right resources and with the right innovation and with the right investments, we can make a real dent and put an end to plastic waste in the environment. Thank you so much, Jacob. We look forward to uh, going in this journey together and learning from one another and creating excitement around this cause and overcoming it together. It's been a great pleasure working with you and your team. And also the same from, from my side, say thank you very much for your personal commitment and engagement, the commitment of, of your team. I think we have taken this from collaboration and partnership, but also to personal friendship and, and commitment. And I think this is the ingredients that takes us and our corporation one step further. Hello everybody, what a way to kick off our End Plastic Waste Startup Showcase event, the event that we've been waiting for this entire year. We could have not been more proud of this partnership between Plug and Play and the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. So we thank our leaders, Mr. Saeed Amidi, the CEO and founder of Plug and Play, and Mr. Jacob Dewar, the, uh, the CEO and the president of the Alliance uh, to End Plastic Waste, 
to be disengaged in this campaign. We have two big announcements. And uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our next guests, Mr. Joe Machado, uh, the project leader from the End Plastic Waste, uh, of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, and uh, Mr. Jeff Kirshner, the CEO and founder of one of our best startups, Literati. And again, we look forward to their announcements. And uh, without further spending any further time, I would like to welcome these two gentlemen to our Startup Showcase event. And thank you very much for being engaged and being a part of our cleanup efforts. Hi, I'm Joe Machado with the Alliance to End Plastics Waste. And one uh, of the very uh, fortunate activities I've been involved with over the past year is to coordinate the collaboration we have with Plug and Play for the End Plastics Waste innovation platform globally. We've been at it for about a year now, and you've already heard some of the great results that have come from this, uh, from our hub in Silicon Valley, from our hub in Paris, and we've also launched our hub in Singapore. And over the coming months, you're gonna hear about more exciting output from this collaboration as the Alliance and its member companies has been exposed to a broad range of entrepreneurs and innovators who are aligned with the Alliance in terms of their purpose of ending plastic waste in the environment. And there's so many solutions that we need to bring to bear to solve this problem. And uh, it's been exciting to work with all of these innovators and really provide them as best we can with, with what it, it takes to scale these solutions really on a global basis, whether that's access to investors or access to expertise coming from our member companies and ourselves, or um, access to the ecosystem of players in the plastics value chain that can help drive more uh, growth for these businesses. And I really just want to talk about one of those uh, right now, and that's Literati, who came into our Silicon Valley uh, hub back in February. And uh, immediately, uh, we recognize that this is an exciting solution, and this is an exciting management team with a lot of motivation and really the wherewithal to succeed and the solution that could unlock something that is unique. Uh, they sprang right away with uh, a way of supporting the Alliance's ambition to really lead World Cleanup Day that was coming in September. It's already here now. And I want Jeff Kirshner, the CEO of Literati, to tell us a little bit about how Literati played a key role in, in making World Cleanup Day come alive on a global scale and some of the exciting results we've had already just in the past 48 hours. Joe, it's a pleasure to be here with you. The last seven months of working together has been absolutely inspirational and has really provided us with a tremendous amount of value. In honor of World Cleanup Day, which was on September 19th, together with the Alliance, we launched the All Together Global Cleanup, an initiative that gave all of the member companies of the Alliance and other organizations the opportunity to come together, combining community, technology, and data to create the biggest impact possible. And during that initial couple of days, we've already had people from all over the world collect nearly 200,000 pieces of litter, all of which have been mapped, cataloged, and collected. Today, we're excited to announce a challenge specifically with plug and play. You can go onto the Literati application, enter the code PNPAEPW, and instantly join Plug and Play's challenge. And together, we anticipate creating an even greater impact for the weeks to come. I just want to say on behalf of the Literati team, it's been a joy to work with yours, and we look forward to a very positive future going forward. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'm really excited to see the results coming in and hear about more and more downloads of the Literati app and the uh, utility of it in World Cleanup Day, which is actually going to go on for the next two weeks. So there's lots of opportunity. And the point isn't just an event, right? The point is to embed this as a habit and a behavior that people have with or without the app to really be aware of the impact of plastics waste and 
uh, the ability to clean their environment on a daily basis. And that's really what we're after. And that's really, I think, what this collaboration is about. And I'll tell you, in addition to the plug and play challenge, everybody in the Alliance, all of the departments are competing against each other as well to, uh, to be more successful and more impactful in this uh, World Cleanup Day that runs until uh, October 2nd. Second or fourth? Doesn't matter. It's two more weeks and, uh, and, and all the time thereafter. So we're excited about World Cleanup Day. We're excited about the cooperation that we've had with Literati and all of our member companies and, and plug and play and a, a large array of uh, corporate partners and, and other project partners in being part of this and scaling it up. And on the basis of that, I'd like to announce now, really, it's a pleasure, uh, a further, let's say, raising of the game in terms of the collaboration between the Alliance and Literati. So we are uh, moving forward with a grant of $950,000 to Literati. I think there's a lot they can do, and we're excited to be working together to get them to the next level and really grow their impact. So, Jeff, I'd like to ask you a question, if I might, and that is... Um, how do you think this app is really going to uh, change the behavior of a typical user, a typical consumer, whether they're a student or, uh, or a parent or uh, an employee of a company? How does it really uh, embed itself into people's awareness and, and change what they do on a daily basis? You know, Joy, I think you hit the nail on the head earlier. Whether it's increasing the innovation through computer vision and machine learning, whether it's building out a curriculum and working in schools throughout the world, or figuring out ways to deepening levels of engagement, i.e. through things like gamification. It's all about getting people to increase their level of awareness for their surrounding environment. And what the Literati platform enables is just that, through the simplicity of taking a photograph. That photo brings you much closer to your environment, whether it's on a beach, or in an urban environment, or just in your backyard. That simple snap of the photograph, when layered with sophisticated analytics, can not only get you to participate in keeping the planet clean, but it also can get you to the root cause of the problem so that we can map problem areas, work on changing our behavior, and ultimately create a plastic waste-free world. Thanks, Jeff. And really, uh, tell us more about the value of the data. So uh, I think the user has a certain experience and uh, it really, I think, improves their awareness and with the curricula you have, it can improve their knowledge as well, um, which is really what we're after. And under that is the value of the information that's aggregated and mapped, you know, on a time and, and location scale. And that can be valuable to a number of players in the ecosystem. So tell us a little bit about what, how that's valuable and how that might improve things for the future. So I'll give you a couple of examples, but really one I want to focus on is the value that that data provides for cities. Cities who want to understand what is lying all over their streets, their sidewalks, their playgrounds, and their beaches. In Holland, the Dutch literati community came together and collected data around small PET bottles. And that data created a deposit return scheme, thereby putting a monetization schematic on top of those bottles. Suddenly they became worth something. And that incentive mobilizes people all throughout the Netherlands to pick up plastic bottles and put them back into the system in their proper way. It's working with the data to help us understand how can we engage people on a level that they may not have already been engaged. And that's a good example of that. You also mentioned mapping problem areas. The data can really help us understand how are cities best allocating their resources? Are trash can places and recycling bins in the proper areas? Do trash and recycling truck routes go at the proper times and through the proper cadence? It's understanding that from the data that can really help us pave a path to the solution. Thanks, Jeff. I really want to wish you tremendous luck in, uh, in, in growing Literati and in increasing this impact and look forward to working with you over the coming months, over the coming years to, to bring, help this solution deliver to the best of its capability uh, everything it can do to reduce 
the impact of plastics waste in the environment. Thank you, Joe. On behalf of the entire Literati team, thank you for your trust in us. We are honored to be partnering with you and look forward to creating a global impact going forward. When was the last time you picked up a piece of litter? What difference would it make? This tiny decision can mean more than you think. One turns into many. And many turns into more than you could ever imagine. It can create change. A community of people cleaning the planet. One piece at a time. What are you going to do? Wow, what a great panel. Um, thank you, Jeff and Joe. With that, I'd like to invite uh, Tal from Plastic Back, a startup from the Paris and Plastic Waste Program. Let's welcome Plastic Back. Hi, Plug and Play in the Alliance 10 Plastic Waste. And for all the view viewers, my name is Tal, co founder and CEO of Plastic Back. We at Plastic Back are converting plastic waste back to valuable raw material. This valuable raw material then can then be used to create new plastics and alternative fuels. On a global average, we recycle about 8% of plastic waste. Another 12% is treated by incineration processes, which use high temperatures and hence a lot of energy. The rest is landfilled or remains in our natural environment. We at Plastic Back are targeting those 80%, a segment which has a potential value of over $5 billion in the EU alone. We've developed a fully chemical solution able to convert plastic waste back to crude oil and valuable raw material. Our process creates free radicals. These free radicals are able to attack the carbon-carbon bonds of the plastic polymer and break it down into smaller and smaller fractions. Our process occurs in room temperature, a huge economic and environmental advantage compared to competition. We're able to treat difficult waste streams including PVC mixed and contaminated. Last but not least, due to the low temperature conversion, greenhouse gas emissions are reduced. One of our conversion units, treating 10,000 tons of plastic waste annually, can save 3,000 tons of CO2 per year. We're a team of chemists and entrepreneurs dedicated to fixing this problem. We're Israeli-based with IP and national phase in the EU, US, and China. Our process has been proven at lab scale on high-density polyethylene, low-density, PVC, and other plastic types. During the program, we've verified our business model assumption, assumptions with the Alliance partners, specified our product fit, and developed collaboration opportunities. On the technical side, during the program, we've improved our process and produced great results. We focused on PVC and high-density polyethylene, and were able to degrade the thousands of carbon-carbon bonds of the plastic polymer to 10 to 20 carbon chains. These results show that the raw material produced by our low temperature process can be used to create new plastics and alternative fuels. A huge step for us. Utilizing our technology, we can work with the petrochemical industry to increase the plastic derived feedstock as an alternative to crude oil drilling, with waste handlers in increasing their addressable waste streams, and with the man and plastic manufacturers in increasing the non virgin plastics in their products. In our upcoming pilot, we plan to treat 600 tons of plastic waste packaging, which are currently being incinerated. The facility, which separates the bread and the packaging, is left with the plastic waste, which it sends to incineration at 80 euros per ton. For this project, we have the waste stream, the technology, and engineering in place. We're looking for an offtake agreement for the produced plastic-derived raw material and strategic partners to join the project. We're post POC with IP and national phase in the EU, US, and China. We're seeking $2 million investment to reach a semi commercial plant. We'd like to thank again the plug and play community and the Alliance 10 Plastic Waste for a great program. 
and we look forward to future collaboration addressing this crucial problem. Thank you. Thanks to all for that great presentation. Up next, we have a panel between Dow and three of the batch companies. Um, Everboard and Bifusion are both from the Silicon Valley program, and Empower is from our Paris program. So please welcome Haley, Rick, Wilhelm, and Heidi. Take it away, Haley. Thanks, Matt. Um, uh, so I just wanted to explain a little bit about the plug and play platform and how it's connect helped us at Dow connect with some pretty progressive startups who have had um, some impactful businesses of turning plastic waste into value. Um, at Dow, we do believe that plastic is too valuable to be lost as waste. So you can see all of this behind me and um, that's a lot of valuable material out there. And we really want to drive systemic change and we know that we can't do that by ourselves. Um, and that systemic change starts with you know, really finding ways to stop the waste and close the loop. Those are two new uh, sustainability targets that Dow has just launched. Um, and, but we know that that happens when there are self-sustaining business models and that actually what is what causes it to be long lasting. So today I just wanna highlight um, how Dow is working with the plug and play platform and I'm honored to be joined by um, three panelists today. Um, and they represent just a spectrum of you know, how we've been working. So from one side of our involvement um, with Heidi and Bifusion, um, we're talking about investment. So we'll talk about that today. Um, in the middle, I think, Rick, we're like on our third round of trials. Um, so you know, that's where we are with Rick. And then with Willem on the other side of the spectrum where we're just starting conversations, but we find a lot of opportunity in ways that we could um, work together on explore, exploring um, partnership. So, um, I think just to give a little context, what might be helpful is to explain um, the Energy Back program, because that's the connection that we have with Rick and Heidi. So Dow and Reynolds um, started a program called the Hefty Energy Bag Program. Some of you guys may have heard me talk about this before, but this is a way that we offer cities um, a way to collect these hard to recycle plastics that might have gone to the landfill. And over the past several years, we've diverted over a million pounds of waste um, into different applications like, you know, other in markets, paralysis oil or energy. And so um, we've reached about four cities throughout the United States and uh, we've seen the impact that even it's just made with these four cities and we want to do more. We want to find ways to grow it more. So when we met um, Heidi and Rick, we immediately clicked and uh, they needed some more materials and we needed more markets of where to, uh, to put um, the product that could derive value for it. Um, so Heidi, maybe we could start with you. Um, I want to explain a little bit about the investment process and how we got there. So we have something called the Dow Impact Fund, and that's where we have projects that actually bid on funding from Dow um, from our foundation that provide, it has to provide a business, a social, and an environmental impact. And so over the past three years, um, we've committed $5 million towards 25 projects. And so I'm really excited to announce today that um, our project with Heidi has received $180,000 towards investment in their machine. Um, and Bifusion is gonna be a critical part to working on getting this hard to recycle um, plastic and films that do have value in demonstrating that to the community of all of the people who actually take the time to sort their waste in the hefty energy bag um, and showing and demonstrating that it does have value. So Heidi, maybe let's turn it over to you to talk a little bit more about Bifusion and the work that we're doing together. Yeah, thanks, Haley. And, uh, and th we're thrilled to be working with Dow and Energy Bag Program. Um, I'm actually standing in front of some of the energy bag waste that comes out of households. Um, this actually came out of the Boise market. Um, I'm standing in, not only in front of the waste, um, I'm in, in Los Angeles in our innovation center getting ready to build the machine that will go to Boise. Um, what Bifusion has done is converted, is developed a system that converts all of this unrecyclable waste plastic into a building material called Biblock. 
um, it goes from waste to product immediately in one system using only plastic waste. Um, the great thing about working with Boise and the Energy Bag program in Dow uh, is that with the city involvement and with Dow's involvement, we'll be able to demonstrate to the community immediately the value that their efforts in sorting properly and how it applies directly to city and infrastructure projects. Um, we've got a team of people on the ground already looking for infrastructure projects and aligning with uh, developers and architects uh, to put this waste to work immediately. So thank you again for your support. We're super thrilled to uh, be working with you. Awesome. Yeah, so you guys can see um, the great opportunity uh, there. And so, Rick, um, now to you. I've, I, I guess one thing that I want to say is that I've been so impressed um, at the scale at which Everboard is expanding. And we're in our third trial with, you, with um, the Hefty Energy Bag material into Everboard. And so I'd also um, mention with, with this uh, relationship where we're working on um, that we've had a chance and an opportunity to even do some trials with our compatibilizers to ensure that everything is mixed properly to get the performance that you're demanding for um, your application. So Rick, maybe over to you, let's talk through um, uh, what, what you have to offer and how we're working together. Thanks, Haley. Um, and congratulations, Heidi. So great news for you. So awesome. Um, Everboard is, I'm going to quickly do what we make, and we make a roof cover board. And in the background here, you'll see this is actually where our material goes. It goes on tops of, on top, on the top of commercial roofs. And the product over my shoulder here is our product on that roof getting ready to be installed. Uh, our roofing material is made from recycled content that's about 60% fiber, but the other 40% is plastic. And that's where the connection with Dow has been terrific for us. Uh, we're active like Heidi working with the energy bag folks. And uh, as Haley mentioned, we're kind of into our next uh, full scale trial of actual production material with Everbag. But we, we take what we start with in our business is not unlike what you see in the background for Heidi. Uh, we take mixed materials and engineer them into a high performance roof cover board. And that combination allows us to compete quite effectively at scale. Uh, our current uh, business, we have installed over 5 million square feet of roof in the U.S. so far and Canada. And uh, we're scaling up quickly. So we're uh, very excited about our partnership with Dow as well as uh, Plug and Play. It's been a great uh, accelerator experience for us. But uh, we're looking for the future and uh, the next scale production test with uh, energy bag as content. Awesome, thanks Rick. I know we've got a lot more opportunities beyond just even where this stands. So I'm excited to see where this journey uh, takes both of us as well. Uh, so finally, last but not least, Willem, um, we are just uh, beginning our discussions. And I would say after the Paris um, session, we realized that we both had very strong programs in Africa and um, that we could work together to really help each other in this space. Um, so just a little bit about our program in Africa and then I'll turn it over to you to explain um, Empower and what you guys um, bring to the table that will really help is um, in Nigeria we recognize that 70 percent of the population gets a lot of their drinking water from a flexible all polyethylene pouch. Um, often they don't have access to clean uh, drinking water throughout this country and so that's something that um, that's how they get access to their their water um, and this is often a very I wish I had a sample to show you guys but this is often a very highly recyclable um, uh, pouch but because of the lack of an infrastructure um, to separate the waste and also collect it in Nigeria the majority of it unfortunately ends up in landfill or um, in the environment so we wanted to create a system to actually collect, capture this and to turn it into value. And um, we had started working on an, like an incentive-based collection um, program with a, a group called Recycling Points. And then one of our customers in Nigeria um, to turn all of this waste into a post-consumer recycled product that we could offer into the marketplace. Um, we have used Pack Studios. Dow has a large presence of um, of packaging testing, uh, often that has you know uh, equipment from our customers and their customers where we can do tests. And so we've done some tests 
um, through our PAC studios to create viable offerings that the marketplace wants um, and that the brand owners want. Um, however, one gap that we had was um, one of our customers that we were working with had extra capacity to do more, but we really needed some more collection and we needed to scale this um, enough to bring in enough product that the brand owners would want. So um, we were looking for more collection sources and Empower was looking for more local recycling options. And this really was um, kind of a beginning of a match made in heaven. So Willem, maybe over to you to explain a little bit more about what Empower does and how we're starting to work together. Yeah, thanks, Haley. And uh, yeah, absolutely. It looks like a great match. And we started uh, in Nigeria about a year ago because we were approached by local uh, waste collection companies and aggregators. And they were talking about this problem with the water sachets. And it's like a huge uh, environmental and health problem because it gets stuck in sewers and there's no offtake for it. And uh, what we did was create this uh, incentive system uh, for waste pickers so they could take up just the water sachets, separate that from the other waste, and deliver this to collection points and uh, get an incentive for that. It was made it worthwhile. And at the same time, we digitize kind of the waste stream. So we make them available. And uh, by using uh, really the data on how much is collected on each site, we then will make that available for potential off takers. So it's, uh, we went uh, and did 50 tons, like, uh, per month end of last year and now during the summer scale it up to 150 tons per month and uh, but we really don't have the issue about now we need to find the uh, larger off takers uh, that are you know able to re recycle that kind of volume uh, a part of what has been collected has been sent to europe because of the lack of local infrastructure so being able to connect to dower and really connect to local recyclers and be able to really both collect this create jobs in Nigeria and also really do the whole collection and recycling there is kind of a dream come true I think for us and the local companies and it's really a perfect match. Yeah so I think we you know we're just starting to work together and hopefully I see a lot of potential um, not just in Nigeria but in other places where both both of us are working together so let's maybe do one last question or round table for the panel is you know what is the impact that you expect to see from um, this work or this involvement or that you hope to see and what other future opportunities um, do you see as well? Well, for, for us in this pilot, we're really excited. Uh, we're the, our target right now, while, this, while the system that we'll be deploying uh, with this particular energy, energy bag pilot location is that um, the system is our, our base entry model. And so our, the throughput of this, of this system is about 30 tons a month. Uh, which is on the low end. So our goal is a minimum of 30 tons a month processing, as well as um, demonstrating a couple, up to hopefully up to five different construction projects in market to demonstrate to the community what we can really do with their waste. Uh, yeah, thanks, Haley. I guess the thing I'd say is the, the relationships that we've developed from plug and play to you guys, to Alliance of Zen Plastic Waste members has been phenomenal. Uh, we, it's really gonna help support the mission we're on for next year. We expect to sell 10 million square feet of roof cover board, and that's 4,000 tons of plastic that'll be diverted from the environment, and we have bigger plans to go forward from there. So, uh, you know, we, we think the relationships that we've established from this have uh, been nothing but additive to the goals we have going forward. Yeah, and I have to agree on the program and uh, these opportunities. And uh, so far in uh, Nigeria, we had uh, 12 collection points that we're working with. And, you know, it's uh, about 1,000 waste pickers have gotten jobs through this. And we're looking now to go from the 150 tons to up to 2,000 tons a month uh, within the next one year and create really, you know, tens, tens of thousands of jobs in waste management in Nigeria. So I think that's our goals. And this is a great opportunity to go towards that. So, yeah. And then from, from my side, I, I guess I would just have to say that, you know, with the new sustainability target that we launched by 2030, we will help stop the waste by enabling a million tons of plastic to be collected, reused, or recycled through our direct actions and our partnerships. This completely aligns with um, getting us towards that target. So thanks, guys, for joining me today. Um, it's an honor to work with all of you, and I look forward to uh, seeing you next together for even more impact. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye.
Thank you so much for that informative panel. I would now like to introduce Bob from Plastic Odyssey, another startup from the Batch 1 program in Paris. Hello everyone, I am Bob, I am the technical manager and co-founder of Plastic Odyssey. Uh, so as a reminder and for those who don't know us yet, Plastic Odyssey is a three-year expedition around the most polluted uh, areas, most contaminated by plastic waste pollution uh, of the world. And we're going to find and to document and to gather and to spread solutions to tackle this plastic pollution. So we have two axes, one is raising awareness uh, and promoting solutions to uh, reduce the plastic consumption and production around the world. And the second is to be able to spread solutions to deal with this plastic waste before it, it enters in, into the ocean or in the natural environment. So we are gathering politics, uh, universities, public, uh, companies, entrepreneurs, uh, so all together we can implement this, these solutions. So we will depart in January for three years on a 40 meter vessel and this vessel is kind of a laboratory that will embark all these solutions and, and spread them around the world. So talking about the vessel, I think you all know the R of reuse in uh, the 5R. So it's actually what we are doing here. The vessel is from 1975. It has many lives like research vessel, etc. And now we are transforming it so it can host the 20 people uh, on board with the scientific team, uh, the marine officers, of course, uh, also uh, the representatives of the project, uh, media coverage team, etc. So super exciting. We are also putting a laboratory so we can analyze all the plastic waste we find on the shores. And uh, we also are building this, work this workshop, this kind of onboarded recycling facility um, to show what we can do with uh, plastic waste. So for example, here is a container con with uh, inside some uh, recycling machines. Uh, that can transform uh, plastic waste into flakes and then into uh, new material like building material or uh, for example piping for water sanitation uh, and all kind of stuff so this is really a workshop to convince people that we can do something with the material that is uh, waiting in the landfill or in the city so um, we are building it with uh, some uh, uh, technical um, sponsors, te technical partners uh, in France, but also all around the world. We have partners uh, in South Africa working with us on uh, plastic paralysis, for example. We have uh, partners in Germany doing the same thing. Uh, we have partners in uh, Egypt, for example, uh, working with us on the recycling part. Uh, talking about that, we are preparing uh, a tour of the Mediterranean. Uh, so the ship will be ready normally in January uh, to leave for uh, four months in the Mediterranean to meet uh, at our first stopovers, for example, Egypt, where we are building a partnership with um, Plastic Bank and a local recycler called the Zabalin, etc. So super exciting, lots to come. Uh, our community is growing. So we are building a platform to host them so we can share knowledge, but also uh, put people in contact. So things happen uh, at every one of our stopover because we are gaining a lot of uh, media traction. So a lot of people uh, see us uh, thanks to media coverage. So we, are, we, want to, uh, we want to take this opportunity to make things happen with this community. Uh, and last but not least, we are building a scientific committee. So we have a lot of experts uh, advising us on whether or not it is the right way to do uh, the way we do uh, things uh, based on recycling, reducing alternative materials to plastic, etc. So um, super exciting. And if you want to join, feel free to contact us.
Thank you so much, Bob, from Plastic Odyssey. Before we take a quick break, we'd like to announce the partnership between Oceanworks, a Silicon Valley batch one startup that turns ocean plastic into valued goods, and Aviant, an Alliance to End Plastic Waste member. Oceanworks and Aviant will together transform ocean plastics into everyday valuable goods. We, are, we could not be more thrilled about this announcement and we're looking forward to the global impact that is to come. We'll also be hearing updates from them at our next global showcase. And with that, I'd like us to take a short five minute break.
Hi, everyone. Welcome back from the short break. And I hope everyone is ready for the second half of our, of our event because it is packed full of exciting speakers. My name is Nick Chow, and I'm leading our ventures effort in sustainability across Europe. And I have to say, I'm very proud of all the startups who have gone through our program. As you know, apart from corporate innovation and startup programs, Plug and Play is also one of the most active early stage investors. And we are committing more investments into startups who have a purpose and an intention to solve the world's biggest challenges. Today, I'm excited to announce two recent plug and play investments who are helping end plastic waste. First up, plug and play invested in Circular alongside Alliance member Total. And you might, you might remember Circular from those who attended the European Selection Day in April, but Circular is a blockchain and AI startup bringing transparency to material supply chains. And secondly, Plug and Play invested in one of the startups in the Paris program, Great Parrot, who is using computer vision to audit, monitor, and sort waste at scale. And with that said, I would like to introduce Michaela Druckmann, the CEO and founder of Great Parrot. Hi, everyone. I'm Michaela Druckmann, co-founder and CEO of Great Parrot, based in London, UK. At Great Parrot, we provide waste recognition software to monitor, audit, and sort waste at scale. And our mission is to digitize waste to increase transparency and automation. And we really want to empower waste managers, producers, and regulators with better data analytics to help us transition to a more circular economy. With our solution, we are moving away from manual audits and visual inspections to a fully automated waste monitoring system. And this is composed of multiple parts. The first one, is a monitoring unit that we place on top of conveyor belts in any environment that is required. We then use AI and computer vision to analyze different types of materials for complex detection. And we output those real-time results into a dashboard for actionable insights. And that can be to have an adapted MRF that is adapting its parameters to optimize the outputs for dynamic pricing based on the quality of the waste and also for certified and verified quality of the waste per bale. Our vision system can also be integrated in different forms of machinery and mechanical sorting as well. In terms of our progress in the last few months, I'm very happy to say that we've closed an additional $1 million of investment led by 360 Capital in partnership with A2A, which is one of the largest utility companies and waste management companies in Italy. With that 3.5 million seed round, this now allows us to grow our team rapidly, develop our product and scale our solutions in the years to come. In terms of partnership, we continue to have significant traction with customers and corporates that are part of the Alliance. We are running six pilots in 2020 with leading waste managers in the UK, Japan, Italy, and France, including members of the Alliance, focusing mainly on plastics analysis, residue line composition analysis, and also brand recognition. In terms of trials, we're planning new trials in waste to energy and chemical recycling. We also receive a $650,000 government grant by Innovate UK to continue embedding our vision system into different types of hardware. And we continue our collaboration on waste taxonomy and data sharing with different plug and play startups. In terms of technology upgrades, we continue to iterate on our hardware to make it as scalable and affordable as possible to retrofit in any facility and scale to different types of MERFs. My team and I have built some of the most cutting edge computer vision systems in the world, and we are continuously improving our AI models to solve really complex problems in waste detection that current machine vision systems are not able to. In terms of our strategy, we are committed to our vision of building and enabling the MRF of the future, powered by AI and different types of sensors. And we're also expanding to new use cases in chemical recycling and waste to energy. In terms of our future plans and asks, we're always looking for partners for pilots and waste facilities who are looking for better analytics on their waste flows. We're also interested in different systems integration to embed our vision system in different types of hardware or machinery. And we're also looking for data partnerships with brands to continue the progress in our brand and product recognition. Thank you so much to Plug and Play and the Alliance. We've learned so much about the industry and where technology can add value and have impact. 
and we really look forward to our collaboration in the next few months. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michaela, for that great presentation. I would now like to introduce three startups from our Priors program to discuss how their companies are working together. Please welcome Simon, Stephanie, and David to the panel. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we have a wonderful panel with three of our European batch startups. Um, so with us is Simon from Interface Polymers, David from Impact Recycling, and Stephanie from Ethion. Um, so first, I'd like to just pass it along. Uh, maybe, Stephanie, we can start with you. Uh, just a quick introduction of yourself and your startup, um, and then we'll just keep going from there. All right. Um, hello, my name is Stephanie Avalos, and I work as a Chief Projects Officer at Ithiel Limited. Ithiel is an award-winning technologies um, company that was born out of the laboratories of Imperial College London in 2017. And we aim to develop replicable, scalable technological solutions to one of the world's most pressing environmental issues, um, which is plastic pollution. David? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, my, my name is David. I'm the CEO of Impact Recycling. And we have developed uh, a technology called BOSS that separates post-consumer plastic uh, into its constituent parts. Um, uh, with up to 98% purity. Um, and we also have developed some additives that go with that that uh, can uh, change the metal flow rate and the color of plastic using what is in total a mechanical recycling process. Um, we have a plant that's based in Newcastle in the northeast of England. And we're developing further plants uh, in the south of England and um, in northern Europe. Um, they're the two plants we expect to develop in 2021, before obviously then trying to move out to the States and, and other parts of the world. Great, thank you. Um, Simon? Yes, yeah, Simon Warrington. I'm the uh, Business Development Director of uh, Interface Polymers. And Interface Polymers has a unique uh, dye block technology that allows you to uh, compatibilize different polymers. So we're really focused in recycling, are in the area of mixed plastics. So many multi-layer films, many different types of plastic waste that contain different plastics that are incompatible. Um, we provide the technology that allows you to bring them together and reuse them into high value applications. Great. So all three of you are actually, you know, you're part of our European badge program that kicked off at the end of April um, and have all been kind of working together um, on kind of formulating different collaborations or strategies or just learnings from one another. Um, so I'd love to pass it first to Stephanie and Simon. You know, both your companies have, you know, started kind of doing some strategy and collaboration together. Um, so I'd love to just learn a little bit more on, you know, what kind of led to that and what that partnership is looking like right now and what you both hope to achieve uh, with that partnership together. All right, I'll go first. Um, well, we had begun working on our Benioff Ocean Initiative project by the time we joined the program. And that project is deploying currently in Manabi, Ecuador. And their business model is based on having an integral solution to the plastics pollution problem in the city that we're working in. Um, so in this case, we started looking for different technologies that would allow us to recycle the plastic that we were extracting from the Puerto Viejo River. We were looking at different solutions and then by that time we joined the program and we we came across impact recycling's technology and their their strategy so we we ha had inter um exchanges with david and realized that this was the right solution for us we've been working throughout this time in developing a memorandum of understanding and how that exchange is going to look like into the future and basically, we're going to be um, having Impact Recycling be our, our, our ally in implementing this project as far as being able to provide the tech support for us to implement this technology in Ecuador. 
Oh, that's that's absolutely fantastic to hear. And I mean, that type of collaboration is very much needed. And um, you know, we're we're very thrilled to hear how it happened so organically and how both you know both parties are really benefiting from working with one another. Um, maybe Simon, if I can turn it over to you, um, I, you know, love to hear about your collaboration uh, with Stephanie and David. Um, yeah, well, our, our collaboration is mainly with David, and 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 it was mm -hmm. really from the first meeting, uh, first sort of session we had together. So we've been very focused on um, taking the low hanging fruit, which has been the uh, post industrial waste. So when people make packaging, they have waste from just making the packaging before it even gets to the consumer. There's waste, and that's going to landfill, incineration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, today, so we've been taking that. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a waste that's already segregated. You can manage it. Um, it can be processed. So that was quite good for us. To, and that, that's what we've been pushing for. But we've had a lot of people coming to us and say, well, what are you going to do with the post-consumer waste? And we've been telling the people, well, we can manage it, but you've got to be able to sort it. You know, if you come to us with a multi-layer film that's not 100% polyethylene but contains other polymers, we can do something with it. We can convert it back into a polymer that's useful that can go back into the supply chain, but you've got to learn to separate it. So we were aware there's quite a lot of separation technologies out there. But when I, when I saw what David was doing with his second generation um, system, and correct me, David, I can't, it's BOSS 2, I think you're calling it, yeah. Um, when I saw what he was doing there, I was thinking, ah, oh, that solves the consumer recycling. Once he's able to do that, and separate that multi-layer film waste, we can then take that and drive that back into the packaging industry so that it can be reused. So it was a perfect fit. Um, we're at the stage now where he's given us the first materials to evaluate. They're gonna generate some more materials so that we can take those and evaluate them. But we have several customers already willing to try and evaluate those products and waiting for us to feed the supply chain with those systems. So it's been a, you know, it's been a, it filled a gap that we saw that we knew would get filled. And the nice thing about, you know, the, the plug and play APW program is it brought everyone together. So it's much easier for us to communicate together and to be able to make some of those things happen. That's absolutely great. And, you know, Simon, I'd love to just build off of that point. You know, the plastics value chain is incredibly complex, especially, you know, when it's just in one geography, but when you start going to different geographies, there's a lot of nuances that you know people aren't quite aware of or there's gaps that you know you may not be able to really fill uh, but you need different types of partners and collaborators to come online um, and I think that's really the purpose of the whole program is for people mm -hmm. from all different parts of the value chain uh, to really come together um, ultimately to drive this common mission of you know reducing and ending plastic waste all around the world um, and there's a lot of different solutions that are needed in order to do this. So, um, you know, this is a question I'd like to open up for everyone is, you know, what do you feel is still needed and where do you feel, um, you know, essentially the audience and different people watching this um, can help out and kind of what your goal is for essentially, you know, the rest of this year in 2021, um, also working together to really drive that impact. So a few different questions in there. Um, yeah, maybe, so, I, maybe I can please, just, please, one yeah. of those just while I've got an idea in my head is, you know, I think there's a lot of people looking for the, the total solution, you know, and because, you know, Stephanie's got a bit of a solution, David's got a bit of a solution, and we have a bit of a solution, you know, so the different companies. We found it quite powerful, and I hope you agree, David, when we've done a presentation together to a brand owner, for instance, you know, that's they start to see all the bits fitting together. And I think, you know, maybe as an industry, we've got to start presenting the, the total solution to some people so that it helps them put it all into perspective. And we're not doing a very good job of that, but I think these types of programs can help that where you've got all different parts of the parts of the solution, but maybe we need to fit the jigsaw together a bit better when we present to the industry. But I, I see that as very, very powerful. And that's what you, we've created, uh, sort of initiated here with some of these uh, programs. Yeah, I, mean, I agree I, with Simon. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Stephanie. No, I was just gonna agree with Simon. I think that one of the main issues for us when we presented our technology was 
to know what we're going to do with the waste that's collected with whatever residue or debris is, is brought out of the river because it's going in due to the fact that there is an inefficient waste management system in the city. So we need to make sure that we're able to solve that issue and it doesn't just keep going into the river um, in the cycle. So finding these technologies to fit in and to be able to just complement the different activities that we're doing um, has allowed us also to be able to bring in other stakeholders. In our case, we've been able to bring in the local um, prefecture as one of the investors for the project just because they've been able to see an integral solution that not only helps with the waste management issue, with the plastics pollution problem, with the river contamination problem, but also as a, pr a productive solution that generates a new industry for the, for the province that isn't being um, tackled at this point. And as David mentioned, being able to work with these vulnerable groups, having the collaboration of base recyclers or informal waste pickers, and just being able to give them better, um, just a better way to continue with their, uh, with the work that they do and to improve their livelihoods has also been a great part of this project. And I, and I definitely agree that being able to fit in these different pieces and find different, um, different technologies that help us solve the same issue has been one of the, one of the main strengths that we found. Yeah, and I think what's definitely helped, uh, definitely helped uh, me has been, I, de you know, I think I've found in um, Etienne and Stephanie in particular, and, and Simon um, um, in Interface is just an openness to actually uh, interact with other companies. And definitely the two opportunities we got here were definitely as a result of very open, transparent com uh, conversations very early on when you know, other people have said, might have said, you know, you shouldn't have said this, you shouldn't have said that, but it was just us being, you know, definitely Stephanie and Simon both, and hopefully myself saying, this is exactly what we do, because take our conversation with um, Simon, for example, you know, our, our technology as it exists today is for three-dimensional materials, for rigids, so that's our factory in Newcastle. Our R&D is into two-dimensional material, and that's where Simon's, um, 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 additive comes in and, and can help us with the laminate material that we separate. But that, that conversation came from us just kind of dumping out exactly what we do and everything we're trying to do to Simon and him listening to that. And then with Stephanie um, and, and what's going on, Hinti and Istian, similarly, you know, I didn't see really that there was any collaboration between, you know, their, their technology is really focused on a river and, you know, them taking out um, and it's at a trial stage and it might be like number of tons, not thousands of tons at, at, the, at the moment. So when we picked up the phone, there's nothing really there. But I think it's interesting to, the competition allowed us to pick up the phone and say, okay, so what are you doing? And because we're not really competing together, we're competing for a big pot of money that's enough for everybody. Um, and from that, I think, again, they were open enough to go, all right, but if we really want to stop it getting into the water, just like Stephanie says, we should actually deal with the problem before it gets into the water. Now we'll collect anything that's in the water, but really the bigger problem is stop it getting in. So, and I think both companies, all, uh, both companies we're dealing with and us, you know, have adapted a little bit. I didn't think that we would be collaborating. I was kind of coming into the competition looking maybe for a waste company to give us supply or for a big uh, finance company to give us money. But the best collaborations we've probably had to date are uh, where both, where we both kind of looked to the future a bit and adapted. Um, so I think the openness is important. I, I could not agree more with you. Um, and, you know, it's absolutely great to hear, you know, it sounds like everyone had expectations going into the program. Um, and along the way, kind of discovered all these new partnerships and collaborations and opportunities. And that really only comes with, you know, being open minded, um, you know, not being afraid to present where you're working on or talk to other people um, and just saying, hey, this is what we're doing. We'd love to work with you. Um, and again, I cannot thank you all so much more. I cannot thank you enough for being part of this program, um, you know, especially in the craziness, what is COVID, but it sounds like you guys have all formed some fantastic collaborations together. Um, and so I know we're kind of at the end of our panel discussion and I just want to have like final quick words from everyone. What do you hope to accomplish in 2021 uh, together um, 
as a kind of leave and last message of inspiration to everyone. Start again. Yeah. Okay. So 2021, we, you know, well, first of all, you know, I really appreciate what the plug and play and AEPW have done. Um, I think they've introduced us to a lot of other companies as well. Um, so that's really good. In 2021, our main target is let's get that first plant where significant amount of material, thousands of tons that currently goes to landfill gets reused into the plastic waste stream in a high value application. That's our target for, 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 for 2021, as simple as that. And, um, and we're going to need help to do that. So we just hope everybody can, uh, can help us and we get support from everybody around, um, some of the big companies, some of the small companies we're talking to, um, to really make that happen. Well, on our end, we're also very um, grateful for what we've gained from the program, the experiences, the exchanges that we've had. Um, it's definitely taught us a lot as a company. We're looking forward to continuing with our deployments, um, particularly the one where we're going to be collaborating with Impact Recycling and Manavi. Um, we're looking forward to finishing the contract for the joint venture with the local government and starting with the implementation of the recycling plant. We know that this is going to be an opportunity for all of us, not just Ixtion as a company and not just for the prefecture, but really for the community to learn more about the plastics pollution problem. And in general, um, I think as a company, for us to be just a step closer to, to our ultimate goal, which is to stop plastic and other suspended salts from going into rivers and ultimately into the ocean. David, final words. Well, for us, um, we're very excited about both projects. Um, I think, you know, it's very exciting to be dealing with uh, river waste and, and marine waste in Ecuador and also changing the working conditions of base recyclers so that um, they get a decent wage and that we're actually helping that um, infrastructure that exists, existing infrastructure that's um, collecting the waste. Um, and But I think then it's equally important that once we take in the waste, uh, that the um, that we recycle it as high grade as we possibly can. So using the compatibilizers that Simon has got in interface polymers allows us to, you know, create uh, post take post consumer film and make consumer film from it, um, so that it can be used again. So um, for us, I suppose it's really getting the funding in place for both these projects, so that um, you know, to me. The alliance has been fantastic for the collaboration and now the last piece of the jigsaw is the funding to come in behind us um, because they're both great projects and um, yeah we just, 2021 for me is looking forward to actually doing both of them <laughs> that's great so um you know for everyone at home watching this we are going to put up a slide with simon david and stephanie's contact information so if you want to get involved or ask them any questions, uh, feel, please feel free to reach out to them. And again, thank you all so much for uh, joining us today for this panel discussion. It's been a pleasure working with all of you um, and hearing about the different collaborations and the exciting projects that are you're already working on and uh, what's to come. So thank you all. Thank you. Wow, I'm so excited to see the impactful connections that have been made through our program. Up next, I would like to introduce Victor from Recycli. Recycli was part of our batch one program in Paris. Go ahead, Victor. Hi, my name is Victor Duwolf and I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Recycli. Now allow me to start by giving you a brief refresher on why it is we exist. Our first product, is an ultra low cost device that is able to create waste item passport logs at a material, object, and brand level. It's currently being used for two things. The first, optimize the operations of material recovery facilities by leveraging life performance knowledge to carry out dynamic adaptations. And the second, to enable the true commoditization of waste by bringing total transparency when trading it.
Our second product leverages our vision system to augment existing sorting systems, such as optical sorters, or merge it with robotics. Now, back in April, when Recycli joined this program, our team of two had been bootstrapping for a few months. And over the next three minutes, I will walk you through all of our major updates on team size, financing, live deployments, and the phenomenal partnerships we've either closed or further deepened. Now, this was our team in April, and this is our team today. Now, because our team is by far our biggest asset, we created an extremely thorough screening process where every single candidate went through an initial interview, a technical assessment, a take home away exercise, um, followed by a final interview and some reference checks uh, following that. Now, for every role, we interviewed on average 50 or so candidates. And that 2% success rate means that we only have 10x engineers. I really don't think we could have hired anyone better. Um, each one of our new hires has done amazing stuff prior to joining Recycling Live, be it developing an entire bionic system by themselves or building a massive scale cloud infrastructure. Each brings a wealth of knowledge and a brutal amount of curiosity to keep pushing themselves and our firm. But our team alone is not enough. The partnerships we have made have acted as a true lever to develop faster, better, and at a larger scale. And these include a continuation of our partnership with Microsoft, as well as the research programs we have uh, with Tay Delft and Imperial College. And we've also worked with two hardware companies to merge our software expertise with their hardware expertise, as well as an amazing partnership with EOLOS, which is supporting us in our growth on the European market. We've also kept on receiving amazing support from our fantastic advisory boards, which really is almost integrated within our team. And again, each one of them brings tailored um, and very valuable expertise uh, to the team. Now, because having the best technology will make us win in this market, we've not stopped pumping the majority of our resources in continuous development on the vision system, which really lies at the core of our tech stack. And over the past few months, we've made substantial improvements in both of our accuracies, um, is that dealing under various different environments. And here are some examples. We're also honored to have been invited by Cognition X to give not only one, but two talks uh, at their conferences, um, as well as having featured in, in several uh, waste and non-waste journals and, and podcasts. Now, to make sure we also maintained the privilege of doing the work we do, we obviously had to make sure we also kept our piggy bank full and seem to have been pretty successful at doing so. Uh, we closed a, a major fundraising led by two European venture capital firms alongside two very reputable uh, strategic investors, which will put us in a very strong position when we decide uh, to go for our Series A. We've also secured uh, a substantial amount of grant financing, both from the UK government, as well as several grants from the European Union. Now, what next? Our tier one pilots are currently happening. They consist of multiple deployments of our system under several different scenarios on both the French and UK markets, with some, if not the largest players in the industry. Now, we're continuously integrating um, and iterating the core of, of our software uh, alongside the peripheral hardware that goes with it. Um, but these pilots and all of their learnings will be completed in November. So we'll start to select clients for our tier two rollouts in December. So if you're interested, please do absolutely reach out uh, via the contact details on our next and final slide. Um, and I also forgot to mention, we also have a new logo uh, since we joined the program. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Victor, for taking the time to discuss Recycli. Now let's welcome Anna Marike, Chief Business Development Officer of the Grey Bubble Barrier, and Jan Yap, founder and CEO of UP. They were both part of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste Batch 2 program based in Paris, and they will today discuss their startup partnership with the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. Thank you. Good evening, uh, the both of you. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, for this you know, mini fireside chat. Um, we wanted to speak with the both of you together because um, you know, the interesting collaboration that you both have um, working together. Um, so first off, I'd love for you, know, you both to introduce yourselves and your company, um, and then we'll kind of dive deeper into uh, your joint partnerships and collaboration together. Um, so Annie, do you want to take it away? Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, my name is Annemarieke Eveleens. I'm one of the co-founders of The Great Bubble Barrier and uh, also responsible uh, for business development. Um, what we do within The Great Bubble Barrier is that we place bubble screens in rivers to capture plastic before it enters the ocean. Um, we do that by placing a tube at the bottom of the river, little holes on top where we push air through that creates this bubble curtain. And if you place that diagonally on a waterway, you kind of collect it all in one spot and there we take it out. We've implemented that in the Netherlands, but uh, we are uh, very eager to also implement that in, uh, in other locations. And, and that's part of what we're going to talk about today. Okay. And Jan? My name is uh, Jan Jaap Volmer. I'm the founder of uh, UP, Upcycling Plastic. And uh, we have developed uh, the UP Circular Plastic Factory concept, with which we help uh, cities, regions, or islands to process their low quality plastic waste into construction materials such as planks, poles, bricks, and tiles. Um, and uh, this, this, uh, uh, this concept is a semi-mobile and modular uh, factory, uh, but it really is all about the whole concept. So we look at the complete supply chain uh, from collection, sorting, to also product development and, and the market, because we want to close the, uh, the plastic waste loop locally. And also that's why we have to work together with other parties like the Great Bubble Barrier, uh, because we are not good at uh, uh, collection or sorting, so uh, that's that's why we uh, well, why we work together with uh, with other parties, and we do that as well in uh, in Southeast Asia as in uh, as in Europe. Fantastic, and I mean the background where you guys are at is absolutely beautiful, um, and I don't think you guys knew each other before the start of the program. Um, so you both are currently batch startups for our European program. Uh, with the Alliance and Plastic Waste um, that kicked off at the end of April. And you know, from that time, I'd love to learn a little bit more about you know, how you guys got to know one another, how this collaboration formed, um, and how it's been going. Yeah, sure. Uh, we, both, we found out that we both had an interest in uh, starting uh, our activities within Indonesia because it's a country that is so polluted that we are really, yeah, that's, one of the goals for us to, to, to clean uh, several areas on the world. Uh, and we found each other again during this batch. Uh, we've also been already together on a trade mission to Indonesia um, within a bigger consortium. Uh, and then during this batch, we could really line up together on, uh, um, yeah, on our collaboration, um, which is very essential because if we would be collecting um, waste from rivers, but we don't know what's going to be done with that waste, um, you still not solve the problem that you're having there, the challenge that you're having there. So to team up with an uh, initiative like UP to really make something very valuable out of that waste is, uh, is crucial for us. Yeah. Yeah, for us it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit the same. Uh, we work together in a, in a, in a Dutch consortium uh, to, uh, to end plastic waste. Uh, also with some other, uh, other startup companies who are, uh, who are very, uh, 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 who have a lot of expertise on, for example, sorting of, uh, of plastic waste. Um, and it all fits quite nicely together. Uh, and and uh, if we work in Indonesia, for example, on the island of Bali, uh, we also work together with local parties because um, to embed the activities we uh, do into the local infrastructure is very important because there's already a lot of initiatives going on. And uh, I feel very much that by cooperating with, uh, uh, with Annemarieke and with uh, the Great Bubble Barrier, but also with other, other companies, uh, we can really strengthen the local infrastructure for, uh, uh, for processing plastic waste. 
so that it doesn't end up in the uh, in the environment or in the oceans anymore. So since this batch, we also really looked into which parties in Indonesia have the knowledge and the expertise to strengthen uh, uh, this project. Uh, and we made some very good connections. Uh, so we have regular calls right now to set it up. We already found locations where we know it's going to be feasible to implement our systems and uh, um, yeah, our devices. So it looks very promising. That's incredibly exciting to hear. And I'm so glad, you know, you guys are not only working together, but working on solving problems in other parts of the world that really need it. Um, so I'd love to learn a little bit more about the potential impact that you feel uh, this will have in the region and maybe other parts of the world as well as, it, as your collaboration grows and expands um, and scales into other parts of the world. Yep. Well, we, we are uh, uh, as as up. We are very much much in the in the piloting stage at the moment. We have a proof of concept where we can make these things, so the technology works. Uh, we are still improving a number of things, uh, but we really want to uh, set up uh, uh, two to four pilot projects, all actually in Indonesia, because we found the partners not only the Great Bubble Barrier and SweepSmart on the Dutch side, but also uh, on the on the local side. What Anna Marika already told us. Um, and we really want to set up the, uh, our operation, our concept over there to close the plastic waste loop uh, locally. And, uh, and the impact we, we want to make directly on the island uh, is that, that we want to uh, uh, save around 1,000 tons per year in uh, the problem stream of plastic waste. So divide, divert that from uh, uh, going into nature into uh, products which we can use on the island. Yeah, so what we've seen, seen so far is that there's already a lot of initiatives in Indonesia um, where awareness is being created by uh, Indonesian initiatives. Um, and uh, what you see is that the multiple sectors um, actually yeah, face this problem. For example, the tourism industry, multiple hotel, hotels already gathering to clean up their beaches to make sure that it's uh, uh, yeah, um, attractive for tourists uh, again to come. Uh, especially uh, after this uh, corona crisis, they really need to kind of uh, get that boost again. Um, and there's like, what we will be offering is not only the cleanups on the, the beach, but also to actually stop the whole like current of litter going towards the ocean. Uh, so if we can stop it right there, uh, it will also not um, yeah, move back to the beaches. That's, that's fantastic. And, you know, I think one thing that we've been hearing um, throughout, you know, this event is the need for different people to come together from different sectors and different spaces uh, with different technologies. Uh, you know, the plastics value chain is very complex um, and to really, you know, end plastic waste, it's going to be, it's going to take a lot of different collaboration and people coming together, um, open-minded and willing to collaborate and work with one another. Um, it's so great to see this partnership that you guys have formed and how it's already kind of growing um, in one part of the world and how it can also, you know, be implemented in other parts of the world as well. Um, so, you know, I'd love to just hear kind of final thoughts on um, maybe some take home audience or some take home message you have for the audience and uh, what you hope 2021 will bring um, toward, you know, towards this joint collaboration and project together. I, I, I hope very much that, uh, um, that that we can continue our collaboration and that the collaboration will actually end in action. And so that we, we have our upcircular plastic factory on the ground in Bali, in Surabaya, and on other places in Indonesia in 2021, and that they are actually operational. So that we process the plastic waste that, for example, the Great Bubble Barrier takes out of the river on, uh, on Bali, and we process that into products. Which, um, uh, which can be sold locally on, in, in, for local applications. And I also hope that we can attract more partners uh, to, to join our effort uh, in here. Uh, we need other uh, companies, also strategic partners, to help us in getting this, uh, this done and off the ground. Uh, also the Alliance to End Plastic Waste is crucial that they support us in, uh, in making this uh, all happen uh, so that we can really save plastic waste from entering the ocean or entering the air. As we can see, we have all blue skies here, and we want more of that uh, 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 all over the world by uh, avoiding plastic waste to enter the ocean, but also to be burned and all landfall. 
I don't think I have a lot to add there. <laughs> we really want to get into action, so we're really looking forward for 2021. Um, as uh, Yanyap already said, uh, we're looking for financial partners uh, that can help us with the starting capitals, uh, strategic partners that can help us uh, in other uh, parts of the chain. We already have a consortium that covers most of it, uh, but if you think, well, uh, I can help out here, please let us know. Um, but I also always want to say is that everyone is looking at Asia as their spreadable problem exists. Um, please also look around in the location where you are right now because plastic waste is really littering different places in the environment, not only in Asia, uh, but also in Europe uh, and also on other uh, continents. So that's a bit of uh, increasing awareness that I would like to share as well on this note. No, that was great. And again, thank you so much uh, to the both of you for being part of our European batch. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you. And this really isn't the end. This is just the beginning. Um, we're still going to be working with you and um, continuing to work together in solving this, you know, big initiative um, around the world, um, bringing in different partners and bring in um, different ways to collaborate with one another. So again, thank you so much for being part of this uh, program and this event um, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anamarika and Jan. I'd now like to introduce our final panel of this event, where we'll hear from Brian Bauer, the president and CEO of Over Synergy, and Joshua Spiros, the innovation manager at BASF. Brian and Joshua will be talking about their partnership and how they collaborated with the help of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste and Plug and Play. Take it away, Josh. Great, so thanks, Sophia. Uh, this is Josh Spiros, really honored uh, to be here representing BASF and to talk about our involvement with the Alliance in Plastic Waste and also uh, plug and place initiatives there as well. Um, maybe brief words of introduction. So I have a PhD in polymer chemistry. I've been with BASF for the past seven years. Uh, I'm currently an innovation manager for BSF on the West Coast, and I'm really focused on scouting and partnership with academics, research institutions, and startups. So it's really, um, plug and play is really a good fit for my, my role out here on the West Coast. And maybe I can turn it over to you, Brian, to introduce yourself. Yes, we're really excited. It's an honor to work with BASF. A little bit about Resynergy. I'm the CEO. Uh, we actually take we have a process that takes waste plastic and converts it to diesel fuel traditionally, but more recently and more exciting is uh, we're taking the output, making naphtha fuel, and uh, not, not fuel, but naphtha output for um, remaking plastic. So this process, what you see behind me here is a one ton system. It processes 300 tons per year. We hope to do 300,000 tons per year within the next three years. Um, this can be deployed anywhere, any location, and be scalable. So the beauty of the microwave technology that we use it is very fast, called fast pyrolysis, and it can do things in a very tight location, about one-fifth the size of traditional pyrolysis, and we can deploy it in small towns, medium-sized towns, and again, where the plastic is, so it's highly efficient and flexible. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Brian. It's super cool. Like we. Uh, it, you have a much cooler uh, background than I do, so I really like that. Um, maybe I can say a little bit about why BSF joined the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, or maybe actually served as a founding member of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, and can transition that, Brian, into a little bit of a chat between you and me about what BSF is doing with Percentergy. Um, so, you know, as you can see, uh, BSF's logo behind me, we create chemistry. And, and to dig into that mission even a little bit more, BSF's mission is really about we create chemistry for a sustainable future. And I think becoming a founding member of the Alliance and Plastic Waste is one way in which we demonstrate our commitment to that mission. And like any global challenge, you know, we all have a stake in this problem. 
Um, and BASF, though we are a very large company, we also know that, you know, in a global problem, we are a very small contributor. And it's only through partnership and innovation across the value chain that we can really hope to be successful. So I think at its core, it's really living BSF's mission. That's why we're part of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. We're also, to dig into plastics a little bit, a company with a long history of plastic innovation. Uh, currently, our innovations in plastics focus on more what you would call performance materials. So emphasis on light weighting, composites, innovations around insulation, uh, increasing service lifetimes of our customers' products, um, even really working on our biodegradable plastics line. And like any of the member companies um, with a similar history to ours, and we certainly recognize the, the time and the resources that went into these innovations. You know, Brian is living this right now, putting in the time and the effort and resources to develop a new technology. We know what that takes as well. And I think something that everybody wants to get better at is how do we recapture the intrinsic value of all that effort we put in so that things aren't just waste that end up in landfills or the ocean or what have you. Um, yeah, so with that, Brian, I don't know if there's any comments you want to add to that before yeah. we dive into discussing our partnership. Yeah, there's a, there's a huge amount of work that goes into these systems. And it, your background and your role is actually teaming up with universities. And I just wanted to mention the University of Minnesota put 12, 13 years in, in four generations of making microwave plastic process work. Um, so we're really taking advantage or teaming up with them real nicely and and uh, accelerating our time to market. So it's been, been about three years where we have really actively added engineers to their team and commercialized this. So we're looking forward to turning the corner here and, and moving towards next year where we scale. Um, things are going quite well here with the largest uh, provider of, well, <laughs> provider of uh, post-consumer waste. And um, it's been fantastic, really accelerating to have a team at the University of Minnesota. Yeah, that's a really good point, Brian. Thanks for adding that. And, then, and maybe we can uh, we can dig in a little bit to our partnership, which we're really excited about. So BSF's partnership with Resynergy uh, that's really been enabled through plug and play in the Alliance and Plastic Waste is really one example of many that BSF has out there where we're really demonstrating that you know, we're open for business in this space. Um, we're active in the area. We should really be viewed as a partner of choice. Um, and when you think about plastic waste in general, obviously we can't, like I've mentioned before, we can't be restricted to our own operations. And that's why we look to creative and agile startups like Brian and Synergy, um, where we can investigate proof of concept solutions that might help us enable some, you know, some new innovations on a very global scale. And to dig in a little bit, so BSF has in, it's a little bit more Europe centric, but we have what we are calling our chem cycling initiative. And while we're very proud of that initiative, it, to some extent, it's very much aligned to uh, European plastic waste and the processes and the programs that they've built around that. And when you get to North America, waste streams are different. Brian knows this better than we do. Waste management is very disjointed. And we need to find some really clever ways of dealing with that as a means of introducing BSF's chem cycling concept to, to North America. So Resynergy's pyrolysis technology, like Brian alluded to, that might provide us a way to bring BSF's chem cycling concept to North America. And in short, what we're going to be doing with Resynergy is evaluating samples um, that they've provided to determine if we can actually directly incorporate those samples from the Resynergy process into BSF processes. But Brian, feel free to add to that, please. I just, I just want to say I'm really excited about um, our PhD people and yours as well because I think you offer so much in experience in some of these technologies and and uh, we look forward to comparing what you've done and your experience and can really evaluate the output of what we have we've been very very focused on primary uh, just basic diesel and through the line sand plastic waste and plug and play we've been greatly motivated uh, in the chem cycling space and for that reason, all of our recent effort has, has been in that. We've learned an immense amount, and Dr. Ruan has put a whole lot of his team uh, in parallel with our efforts. So it's, a, it's, it's not just us, it's the whole world really attacking this issue. And um, with that, I think uh, this is gonna be exciting next year, 2021. 
Yeah, yeah, that's I, I agree. And that's a really good segue maybe into the last question of the thing I want to discuss, Brian. It's just kind of our hopes, our dreams for 2021, because certainly 2020 has been unprecedented uh, it, it, by, by many definitions of the word. And, you know, for me, what, what my hopes for 2021 are that we keep the momentum that surprisingly, in my opinion, around sustainability, around plastic waste has really maintained even during a challenging year with, with COVID and all the fires in California and all these things. It's really reassuring to see that people's commitment to, say, to sustainability has not faltered. And my hope for BSF and our partners and everyone is that we really maintain that momentum. I don't know if you have hopes and dreams for 2021, but it'd be great to hear them. As things go well and these samples prove out, uh, we look again towards scaling. So in that initiative of going from 300 tons per year to 300,000 tons per year in such a short time frame, uh, it's, it's possible through the way we scale. We scale like Tesla and their batteries or mm -hmm. server farms and their, and their computers uh, in a horizontal fashion. So if things test out well, we, we expect to go very fast in 2021. And then as far as collaboration goes, I see the whole world really doing more partnerships like this. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a lot of global awareness uh, about plastics. And you see so many different articles um, coming our way by major publications, the world is getting smarter and they'll, they'll understand more like we do that it takes many, many different types of efforts to succeed. And it's not just mechanical recycling, it's, it's chemical recycling, it gets you back to pure um, chemicals so you can use in all applications. Um, so that kind of education globally, uh, look forward to that as well. Yeah, well said, Brian. Yeah, I'm, I too am excited for the, uh, the technical commitment to the problem, not just the social commitment. So I, I'm with you. Um, so with that, I mean, on my behalf for BASF, thank you to Plug and Play. Thank you to the Alliance on Plastic Waste. And thank you most importantly to our partner Synergy. And uh, Brian, unless you have anything to add, I think we can turn it back over to the Plug and Play team. Oh, that's good for me. I look forward to our efforts. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for that great panel discussion, Brian and Josh. Um, you know, I cannot agree, agree more with Josh's point on there being a commitment to sustainability even in the middle of COVID. Um, so I'd love to just kind of say again, you know, we are very much excited to be launching three new hubs next year. Um, we're gonna be launching the first new hub in Shanghai, followed by San Paulo and Johannesburg. Uh, but just because we're launching these three new hubs, doesn't mean we're stopping with the other three. We will still be having our Silicon Valley, Paris, and Singapore program going on. So we're gonna be six total hubs next year, all working with startups around the world, bringing their solutions to the forefront, having them work with different Alliance members and different members um, coming to us through plug and play, all with the hopes of ending plastic waste around the world. And so I'd love to actually announce that we are starting our call for applications um, today and we'll be ending on October 30th. So if you are a startup or know of a startup that is working to end plastic waste somewhere around the world, uh, you know, right now we're mainly focused on North America for our upcoming program. But if it's anyone around the world, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, there will be also be a link on our website where startups or you can apply uh, to be part of this program. And then a member of the plug and play team will get back to you um, to see if you're a good fit for the program or not. So, you know, lastly, I'd like to thank everyone so much for participating in this, for all of you at home or in your offices around the world uh, for viewing this presentation. I know we're in crazy times, but I still want people to feel inspired and hopeful with what we're doing in sustainability and with the Alliance on Plastic Ways and to really get inspired on what these startups and all these member companies are doing working together to really drive solutions and drive impact. And I you know, invite you all to participate. If you're not sure how you can participate with any of these startups or with the member companies or with Plug and Play, please feel free to reach out. My email is here. We're always open to discussing it and we look forward to hearing you.
And again, thank you so much everyone for being part of this great program, um, and great, this, this great event. And we look forward to seeing you at future events to come. Thank you so much.